Good afternoon, everyone. Global crop losses. Let's run down a huge list that was reported only in local media. You know, some of the global stories you heard about were the canola losses in Canada due to ice and snow early in October, the freeze out and the losses in Western Australia, as well as the massive 200 year floods in France. But where else across this planet did we lose food, vegetables, and fruit this year you didn't hear about? I'm going to run down a giant list for you right now. And any of you that are already on Gab.ai, I need an invitation to get on the platform. If you know the developers, tell them I'd like to get in. I wanted to start posting my Adapt 2030 information on this platform because they will not censor the information. And please remember to subscribe to Adapt 2030. And you might ask yourself, how bad can it get if our global crops start to fail and prices really rise and there are some shortages regionally? Let's take a look here at Venezuela first. They're putting armed guards on the food trucks in Venezuela currently. Highway banditry, they're actually stopping trucks with food on the highways, taking everything off and taking it back to their homes so they can eat. This is what the supermarkets currently look like after they've been raided, when people break down the doors and overpower the guards. The line's out in front of the supermarket here. If you think that's a long line, it continues down the street, around the corner, and further down the block. It's gotten so bad, in fact, that the Venezuelans are crossing in these numbers over into Colombia to buy foodstuffs and bring it back. Staying down in South America, more than 50% of the cherry crops lost to frost damage. Peru, asparagus prices up 15% due to frost. Philippines, banana output affected by the typhoon damage. Looking through the listing at Fresh Plaza, Bolivia, frost damage to vegetables. Frost damage in Austria. Potatoes damaged by drought. Lebanese citrus growers, frost losses. Massive 128 million kilo losses in Argentina. Chile lost plum production, frost. Israeli potato crop damaged by frost. Almond crops in Chile damaged by frost. Extreme snowfalls, that was earlier in May though, across Europe with the flash floods. France, which decimated their wheat production. All fruit production damaged in Argentina by frost. Cashew prices coming out of Vietnam. Lack of rain, which follows the grand solar minimum pattern. And you can see Vietnam produces almost 60% of the cashew crop across the planet. Olive oil prices set to spike. Spain's citrus harvest, too much rain. Winter salad prices much higher than 2015 due to the massive floods in France throughout the year. Cauliflower prices up. This is due to French production usually coming in at around 18 million cauliflower, but they've only even harvested 13 million and they're not going to be anywhere close to that number. Extreme drought in the U.S. The number of cattle is the least since 1951 which explains why your beef prices have gone up. But staying in California, with the lack of water and the protectionist measures for the fish and artificial droughts created by the government there withholding water that could be used for agriculture. You look at these numbers of the production, 99% of the artichokes, 44% of the asparagus, a fifth of the cabbage, two-thirds of the carrots, half the bell peppers, 89% of the cauliflower, the broccoli, the celery, and it just keeps rolling on. California is our vegetable basket. Increases in price across the board for all veggies you're going to buy. They're looking here at around $50 per box for cauliflower coming up. Run down here on the California crops that are grown in the percentages overall of the entire United States production. Literally putting all of our vegetables in one basket. Now, staying with the pistachios, California grows 98%, but those are heavily water-reliant trees. And the world pistachio production's plunging due to U.S. output cuts. So we can come back into the 2011-2012 pricing with those of you who are familiar with that. 
If you hadn't been following the absolutely earliest record snow, record cold across Alberta, suspending the canola harvest due to everything being covered in ice and snow. So look for a bush in canola prices. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. And I wanted to ask you the question, how many of these stories of agricultural price rises came across your local news that you saw this year? And as the prices continue to rise on all of our agricultural commodities, you can see where the trend is going based on the last five grand solar minimums and how that affected agricultural output. Bob over at Trade Genius, jump over there. They're trading on the grand solar minimum cycles and they'll be happy to explain to you how it works. I encourage you to jump over there. They know what's happening. They see what's coming. They have an agricultural crystal ball.